Hello star babies, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I have a sort of story time video. I had the idea for a while of doing a video about dating each sign, my personal experiences. I know you guys like story times, I know you guys like when I draw from my personal experiences. I feel like that's kind of what makes my channel unique when it comes to astrology. It's all based on things I've lived through, people I've met. It's not just information in books. And I think that's a lot of what you guys like, I hope. So uh, I have dated a f quite a few people in my time and um, I want to go through, I actually haven't even plotted this video out, so I should probably grab some kind of notebook just to like make sure it helps me to write things down while I'm, I'm talking. So I wanna go through each sign and see if I've dated each sign and talk about my experience romantically with each sign. So let's go. Aries, I had one sort of thing with an Aries and it was back in 2010 or 11. It was at a summer program at Berklee College of Music before I even attended there. I was in high school and I went there for five weeks in the summer to do like a summer music study program. And there was this guy and he approached me, of course, typical Aries. He, um, we were coming out of our placement tests because we had to take tests to see where we would be placed in the classes for the summer, like our level and things like that. And he approached me, what did he say? I think I was talking to some other kid about a band and he was like, yeah, I love that band. Also, I love your dress. I was like wearing a hot pink dress and high heels. It was the most ridiculous. I mean, I, you're wearing a hot pink dress and high heels to summer camp. Like, what are you doing? But this is how extra I was back in the day. Um, anyway, so he definitely, he approached me. First of all, he instigated everything and I definitely fell for him way harder than he fell for me. He was hooking up with other girls through the whole summer. I should have known. It was like a summer program, but I had that Leo pride that I was like, he met me and, and I need to be his dream girl. And, and you know, we are totally meant to be. He, at the time, he was very attractive to me. He was like sort of darker and had this wild hair. Now looking back, he was just a slob. Um, kind of like just a sloppy wannabe hippie sort of wannabe catcher in the rye Holden Caulfield type of hipster kid and at the time I just hadn't I didn't know guys like that I didn't know that guys like that are a dime a dozen like they are everywhere um, anyway so I definitely wanted him to be in love with me and I thought we were falling in love whatever because he was like maybe the first guy I think I actually made out with um, Yes, this must have been in 2010. Wow, that's a long ass time ago. Yeah, I mean, he was cool. He just was uh, a young Aries. He did not want to be tied down. We didn't even live in the same state. He lived in New England and I lived in Chicago. Like, it was part of my delusion. So yeah, that was my experience with him. I would just generally say that um, if an Aries likes you, they're gonna go after you. I always say, but an Aries will you'll know if they like you. It might not be the kind of relationship you want because their their energy is all over the place and if they're a young Aries especially, they're like, I have so much, you know what, energy and I need to spread it around to all these girls. Luckily, we didn't sleep together, but um, I definitely thought we were gonna be in love and we were not, so, <laughs> Aries. <laughs> okay, on to Taurus. I've only had a thing with one Taurus. He was an Italian football player. I met him at a bar in Hollywood a couple years ago before I was dating Gio obviously he hardly spoke English his friend was translating for him and uh, he was quite obnoxious but I think I let it slide because he was Italian um, and he was calling me gordita which is like chubby um, and maybe at the time I had a little extra poundage on me but um Again, I don't know why I excused that. I'm like I I was telling him that it was mean, but he was like, "No, it's affectionate." And maybe I know like in Latin culture, it's okay to call your family members that sort of, but like is it really okay cuz it's kind of hurtful to make a comment about someone's body. So like people can say that's just in our culture and I'm like, "But the recipients are not always cool with it, so it doesn't matter if it's in your culture." Anyway, so I just kind of let a lot of things slide cuz he was cute in Italian. And 
what else happened he was buying me champagne telling me to drink all this champagne he was super fun he was very boisterous and very loud and he was like always dancing he was like up in the club doing weird dance moves uh he must have been a leo rising or something he was extremely showy and i think was wearing like really short shorts i don't know he was like exactly what you would think of as young italian club soccer player unfortunately he I think he and his friend thought they were more famous than they were because I was like, you know, trying to put them on my Snapchat at the time and his friend was like, no, 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 not, no, no, no. And I'm like, yikes, like no one knows who you are. Sorry, dude. Ugh. And then I asked my friend from Italy if he knew their teams and he was like, neither of those teams are good. Like they suck. No one cares about them. So they had a little bigger egos than, um, than maybe they should have had, but yeah, he was cool. He was cool. He was cool. What can I say about him being a Taurus? Uh, well, he definitely dressed very nicely. He was very much into nice clothes, his appearance, and he just looked expensive and he liked expensive champagne and all of that. It's so funny. Taurians are like known for being loyal and they are until they're not. And then then it's the opposite. So we were like speaking for several weeks and talking on WhatsApp. He was like literally telling me that he loved me telling me he loved me like two weeks after meeting me and then he ghosted me and I was like hey you're like we haven't spoken he's like yeah I have a girlfriend I was like okay okay so okay so um, let me cross that off the list because that's my experience with a Taurus man Gemini men so oh, do I have a lot of exp I mean I'm dating a Gemini right now but what about other Gemini's my only other experience I'll talk about Gio in a second but my only other experience is a Gemini who my my best friend has had a long sort of on and off thing with him and they never really had a relationship he never really wanted to commit typical typical bad side of a gemini not that all gemini's are like that but he never really wanted to commit um and he always was bouncing around multiple women i mean he <sighs> wow that man gets around anyway um my friend always had a thing for him she had been in love with him and he wasn't in love with her and then one time we were all cool because we just like played music together and stuff and then one time we were hanging out in the summer like several years ago and he just decided to try to put the moves on me just by being like you know i think you're so beautiful and i always have thought that and i've just never said and i said she's my best friend she was in love with you you played her you brought this has to be a joke, right? And then he never tried it again. But I'm like, you have to be, you have to have some nerve to go towards your ex's best, sort of ex's best friend and try to get with her just cause you're bored. Like if he wasn't doing it every night, there was a problem. Oh my gosh. Gio's a Gemini and my experience with him in particular being a Gemini is that he made me laugh so hard the first time I met him and that's what really like did made me do the double take I always will express it like that because like he was cute and I actually hired him to be in my band because he had a Portuguese last name there was like him or someone else who had been um, recommended to me and they my guitarist said they're both talented um, so pick whichever one you want, you know, I can't say one is better than the other and I just picked him because he had a Portuguese last name so that's the story of that and then Are you listening to me? George So yeah, then at our first rehearsal he was like cute whatever But I wasn't really in the mood or like in the zone to be checking guys out I was like, let's get this show together you know, it was band rehearsal, so I was like in band leader mode. And then he just, he used this funny voice and made a joke. And I like did a double take because he had the same type of humor as me and you don't find that a lot. I know, you know, you guys see I have like a, I don't know, pretty playful sense of humor, but I also have a very dark and very weird and very, um, I don't know how to describe it. I have a very specific sense of humor in in real life like people I, I genuinely find hilarious and so he had that and I was like what nobody like in relationships I know this sounds bad but until Gio I was always the funnier one I was always the funnier one people have always said about my exes like you were much more exciting than he was he was kind of like a, a limp piece of bread 
so I don't know why I don't know why I allowed that to happen but um, Gio and I are definitely equally funny I would say um, so he really got me with being funny and then he is just incredibly positive to be around and incredibly encouraging and that doesn't mean that he doesn't get down on himself because he has a Capricorn moon so trust me we are always talking about his self-worth and him being hard on himself and not feeling like he's done enough work and things like that but um he just brings a very positive energy and a he's a wonderful communicator uh both you know over text and and you know face-to-face -face communication it's the best communication i've ever had in any relationship in my life and i think that's why it's the longest relationship i've ever had in my life and um i will never break up with him and we're going to get married and have children so Gemini men, if you want one and you feel good about it, go for it. Oh my goodness. Okay, people always comment, I know you hate cancers. I know you hate this sign. Guys, I literally don't take this stuff that seriously. Like, I love astrology, but I don't hate people based on their birthdays. Can we just, can we just grow up a little bit and understand that that's truly, truly crazy? Like, that's truly hindering you living like a normal person. Um... There's no way that I could judge millions of people because they were born within certain dates. So let me just get that straight. However, um, my experience dating cancers is not positive. And that I think is also because the place I was in my life, I was giving out an energy that allowed me to be used by people or to... Essentially, my experience with cancers is I was attracting men who were kind of like like leeches like um like emotional vampires sort of and emotionally abusive and they liked me for being showy and for being unique and confident but then when it came to dating me they didn't actually like that i was confident or that people looked at me or that i dressed in a certain way uh once they started dating me they just wanted to be um extremely possessive which is i feel like an experience a lot of people have with water signs or mostly scorpios but that's that actually wasn't my experience with scorpios cancers do it in um, the cancers i've met have done it in a very manipulative way where they make themselves seem like the victim all the time they always have an excuse for i'm sorry if i'm i'm using language that's generalizing i have many cancers i love um just not the ones i've dated um they they make excuses for everything that they do even if they've done something that's hurtful they're making an excuse for it rather than apologizing for it um they can be very distrustful and i know a lot of you will try to analyze where that comes from and you're being hard on them that comes from a place of being hurt da da da, da. but you know if you come to date someone you need to be emotionally healed it's not my responsibility to like understand why you are emotionally abusing me i am not i don't really feel bad for you you are abusing me so you know if you punch me in the face and you come from a bad family I don't care you've punched me in the face you clearly need to go to therapy and figure out like you know abuse I just there's there's no excuse there are maybe correlations or reasons behind why you display this type of behavior but there's no excuse I'm sorry like I would never tell my friend well stay with him he's had a hard life even though he beats you like absolutely not the cancer guys never beat me, but they definitely <laughs> emotionally abused me. Um, one of them toyed with me a lot and just kind of, uh, we weren't on the same page as to what we wanted in the relationship, even though I expressed exactly what I wanted. And uh, also what I find with cancer, so basically he didn't want to commit to me and I was falling in love with him and wanted him to commit to me. And then he tells me later that he was in love with me like, that's not useful information you didn't say that to me and you didn't treat me like you were in love with me so it's very hard for me to believe that cancers to me always want to rehash the past they always hold on to what's in the past they always want to rehash things before and bring up bad things and they don't want to let go of the past and one cancer i was with dude i'm sorry if you're watching this but like i don't know what you expected you know like it sucked um is like to this day BFF butt buddies, like up each other's anuses with his ex, um, ex from college. And at the time when I started seeing him, he told her and she was not pleased with that when actually she had never spoken to me in person. 
even though she said I was fake. So I don't really know where she got this information about me without meeting me or hanging out with me, but that's a different story. Um, and it still hurts. It still really hurts because I know that her intentions behind saying that were to keep him around her finger and it had nothing to do with me and, and all of that. So it does hurt that like that was even brought up to me instead of him saying, no, she's not. She's not fake and she's a great person and I don't want to hear that from you. I was never supported by him from the get-go. You know what I mean? She was, their relationship would always take precedence, which is fine, but which is also maybe why I could be so mean. You can't give your everything to another person if someone is already sort of your everything, you know? So if you're not in a relationship where you're getting and giving everything to someone, maybe you need to look at, that's all I'm gonna say. Anyway, uh, yeah, he didn't wanna let go of the past. And for me, I'm, I'm really good with cutting people off. I'm like, we were friends for six years, but you treat me like, Shh. Goodbye. Like, we're not friends anymore. Um, you, you know, you, you want to be with me and have all the benefits of being physical with me and have all the benefits of being my boyfriend and not being my boyfriend. You're kind of being a boyfriend to someone else. No, goodbye. So that's what I had to do. And then my other cancer, I was actually in a relationship with, I mean, how many cancers? I feel like I've been with so many. One was like a sort of never was a relationship. And then the other one was a proper relationship and was a literal nightmare, like made me a monster. Um, and there's no excuse for that. I don't, you know, I had the first and only time the relationship I ever raised my voice at someone and ever felt physically like I could punch through a wall. Like I could, th like I was rageful because I had no trust with this person because he was always accusing me of betraying him. Um, and anytime, anytime, you know, I, I expressed that I had an issue with something he was doing, he always attacked me back. Can I just give a general tip, not just for people dating cancers. Men have learned that we don't expect them to cry, that it's like really special when men cry. Um, so they use it against us. Men can and do cry. It does not mean that you need to do something to stop making them cry. If you're dumping a guy and he starts crying, like, yeah, I mean, I would be crying too. I'm amazing and you're never gonna be with me again. Like, sucks to suck. Doesn't mean you need to get back together with him to stop him from crying. People are so afraid of crying. People always say, no, 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 don't be sad, stop crying to anyone who's crying. Let people cry. You can cry over me, that's fine. I just, um, the one cancer I dated always used tears against me and at the time I was like he's crying it must mean so much because he's a man because we're taught that men don't cry and so if they do you need to take it really seriously trust me I have dated my fair share of freaking crybabies and by that I don't mind when guys cry but I mean crybaby by crying at inappropriate times using that to manipulate me like and after a while it just becomes like a boy who cried wolf it's like wait why are you crying I should be crying you're the one abu like abusing me um, there was no privacy when it came to him and he just wanted to control every aspect of my life and I am so thankful that I didn't stay a minute longer in that relationship. I'm sorry to have totally just beat you guys up, cancers, but uh, my opinion of you is not based on two guys. Uh, those are just really, really underdeveloped cancers or they just, I don't, I don't know, but it's in the past. What's in the past is in the past and I have moved on to bigger and better things. I will say the emotional connection was there with the cancer that I was in a relationship with. I definitely felt like he was emotionally there and he was able to talk about emotional things and he was able to, um, you know, connect with me on that level. He wasn't vapid whatsoever and he was very artistic. So that was a great thing. Oh, and I, right? Am I crazy? I need to check this person's birthday. I'm pretty sure he's a cancer. Was he a Pisces? Yeah, so uh, one other cancer I knew who's a lovely person is um, I had a friends with benefits relationship with him for like, I don't know, six, seven weeks. It was totally cool. I really can't believe that he was as cool with the friends with benefits thing as he was because cancers usually are like, uh, no, I need you to be my person and to love you. I don't like that you won't commit to me and this could really hurt me, but he was chill with it. Um, 
also i think he was also in love with someone from his past like he there was like the one that got away and it wasn't me so he was like yeah gabby's cool but like in my mind i'm probably gonna try and marry this girl one day like we were it was just the right place the right time we were both healing from heartbreak and actually it was fine because we trusted each other and we had a nice time um and he was very emotional and very sweet and very cushy and now he is kind of soul searching and finding himself and i don't really know what's going on with him uh but i wish him the best so that was a positive experience with the cancer okay that took forever i'm sorry dating a leo i dated one leo it was in college he was a runner a marathon runner and uh a fantastic musician and i noticed him first off the bat because uh somebody was like that kid can sing and i just found that really like I don't, not a lot of guys <laughs> at music school could really sing i mean some people could but he i don't even think that was his major voice i don't know but when someone can really sing then i was like okay and he could play piano he could play guitar he was multi-talented um and he kind of walked around like he owned the place he had this bde one could say that specific energy even though he wasn't like a huge guy he just had that energy that you just kind of look at him and notice him like okay what's what's going on here he was also very muscular because he was a runner so um he was definitely somebody that you notice and we both kind of liked that attention what i also liked about him was that he dressed really well he would never rush me when we were in sephora because he also liked skincare and cologne and all that so we would always play in sephora it was good to have a sort of kindred spirit in that sense we could both be kind of vain together and it was a very young relationship it was just like two kids having fun and being showy and we would like go to the cafeteria together and walk around the school and we like really thought we were just the stars of the school the way it ended i i just didn't feel like he took me that seriously unfortunately i snooped on his phone which was inappropriate don't do it if you feel like you have to do it you already don't trust the person and you should not be in that relationship but when i did i found stuff that basically confirmed that he had different feelings about me it wasn't as serious as i thought it was um or he didn't see it being long term and anybody i've dated basically i'm like i would marry you i don't waste my time you know i don't waste i want the fairy tale i don't waste my time so that that hurt and then once the trust was broken it just really could not be repaired we kind of got back together and people the 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 thing that made it really hard to not be together was people would say like you guys were so cute together you guys were such a beautiful couple and it makes you and someone people would say that about me and the other cancer when people say that it makes you believe like you're right we were a good couple we were great we should get back together nobody knows what goes on with you guys behind closed doors just because you look good together like oh my goodness people need to stop saying that you know when breakups happen just say i'm sorry i'm here for you breakups suck um you're gonna get through it don't say oh no why you can still make it work like accept that that, that the person is broken up out of their relationship and, and just say you're sorry and that it sucks and help them move on um it was a very fun relationship we definitely were similar spirits and it was nice to have a guy who uh enjoyed the finer things in life and spoiling themselves and he was a great gift giver he was a major gift giver that was like totally his love language and i felt very spoiled by him so at the time it was i mean it was just a super fun relationship but we just had different interests and i think he he really wanted somebody who was more athletic i think like running was everything to him so i think in his dream world he would be with another woman who is a marathoner and they would live in new england and live that life and um i'm just that wasn't gonna be me virgo the only virgo i have really ever had a thing with was this guy from a cruise ship uh he was very nice to me literally nothing ever happened we just kept giving each other compliments i was probably 15 and we just kept saying you're so lovely we clearly had crushes on each other nothing happened over the cruise and nothing happened after we were just texting and he would always mention this girl that i think they had the same birthday or something and he felt that they were destined to be together he'd mentioned her a couple times and now they're married and i'm very happy for him he was very um he's a major gentleman he was very respectful which is typical good leo uh, good virgo and just a clean cut all around all american guy 
and I'm glad he's he's found his lady and they're happy together and they're just adorable. So no hard feelings because he was respectful and um, and I was also 15. Uh, Libra, Libra guys. Okay, so another guy I met during this Berkeley summer camp experience was a Libra and he was very flirtatious, very flirtatious. Um, but he also had a, a major feminine energy. Like, if you met him, you might not be able to g get a vibe as to who he might be attracted to. Like, he could be attracted to guys. He could be into girls. He could be... Like, you, you wouldn't get a vibe. He was very sort of androgynous in appearance. He had, like, a very slender kind of... Not feminine body, but very slender very pretty and you yeah you wouldn't really know his vibe he had a very blended energy like totally masculine totally feminine leaning more towards feminine and he was super fun and we sort of had a fling or whatever um we were young i'm, I'm not it wasn't like serious serious we we're just like making out and doing stuff uh, around the city and things like that but it was really fun and he was always very respectful uh but he was very flirtatious to the point where like I think I was a little young for how flirty he was and, and he always wanted to talk like text and kind of flirt and stuff over text and I was young I was literally 15 16 I was like and at that time at that age I wasn't comfortable with that and I was like oh god like he was really forward um and now it's another situation of he's another guy who's kind of soul searching and I don't know what's up with him um and I wish him the best and he just reminded me of a lovely flirtatious elf or like someone from Greek mythology, like a playful, not like a Dionysus, but like Eros or maybe so someone, someone like a playful little nymph. That's what he reminded me of. He was just a major lover boy. But at the time I was like, I'm young. Okay, Scorpio. So... I had a relationship with a Scorpio um, senior year of, co of high school into college and it was wonderful and he was my first love and um, what can I say? It was the relationship that made me grow up. I know that's and I had stupid relationships after that, but I will always have so much respect and so much admiration for that relationship because for the most part, it was extremely respectful. Um, it was emotional. It was much more m mature than I thought. I mean, I still look back and think we had a mature relationship like emotionally and the way we communicated and our energies it was like an old old soul relationship thing it was not like a high school thing he was out of high school um and i was a senior but yeah um utmost respect for that person and unfortunately it took us a long time to move on from that relationship even when we um separated i broke up with him because I was in college and, and we were apart and I was like I just need to have a college experience and I need to I want to date last time we've spoken years ago he said he understood completely um and he yeah it's just a wonderful I, I I don't know why like I get so serious and so contemplative when I think about it but I just am thankful for that relationship because it gave me a little bit of a taste at the time of what to weigh other people against and now that's Geo. You know, Geo is the standard and I will always be with Geo. But at the time, you know, my other boyfriends in college, I was like, they're not as smart as this guy was. They're not as thoughtful. They're not as, um, it just was, it was like, whew. so yeah, I just, it's just kind of, you know, when you think about your first loving relationship, when you said, I love you and you really meant it, it was like, it's just beautiful. Um, that's why I just I just love Scorpios because there was just I don't know. So I had so much respect for him and he was so smart and it was just an old soul relationship. So I am very thankful for that. 
Sagittarius. The only Sagittarius I've ever sort of had a thing with was this guy I met in Spain. He was American though, so not, a, not that exciting. He was cool, he was a little too crazy for me. He was in high school and I was in high school, but he was like a party boy. Like he would drink and smoke and he had lived so much more in that adult partying realm than I had. In high school, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't uh, party, I, I hadn't like really hooked up with anyone or anything like that. So he was just like crazy loud party boy Sagittarius. And I think it just kind of kept us from connecting because I, I do like, or I, I had been attracted to people who were more outwardly sensitive and contemplative and quieter and artistic. And he was like star of the show, loud, drunk in the streets, falling down and doesn't care if people see him. And I was like, meh. He was definitely cute. We definitely, you know, we thought each other definitely had chemistry and whatever. Um, but it's just, you know, it just too different of energy. Um, but he was like typical young Sagittarius, young, young man Sagittarius. But he's great and I wish him also the best. He's an amazing, uh, he's got an amazing business now that he launched himself. Very proud of him. So yeah, wish him the best. Capricorn. I really think Capricorn always gets the short end of the stick in these videos because I don't, like, I just, until recently, I haven't had many Capricorns in my life. I just don't attract them in my life. Um, I've never been with a Capricorn. Geo is a Capricorn moon. I always say that. So I do feel, and I do feel like it's very dominant in the way that he is. So I understand... I think I understand what it might be like to sort of date a Capricorn, but I've never really dated a Capricorn. But um, Geo's definitely working on not being a workaholic. He definitely um, puts his value in his productivity and his work and his uh, goal reaching and, you know, what he considers to be success. When he gets stressed, he just wants to like whip himself into just working, working, working. Um, what else? I don't know. I mean, uh, Capricorns might be a little more emotionally closed off and I haven't had that experience with Geo, so I can't speak on that. But Geo definitely does have Capricorn energy. Uh, but I do love it because we're both very driven people. We have goals and he's never told me my, my goals or my dreams are too big. And he always encourages my work and encourages any prospect that I set my eyes on or any any project I'm working on. He's always there. He's always there to help me. So I do love some Capricorn energy um, in, in a partner. Aquarius. Oh my god. I feel so bad. I have a lot of Aquarians in my life that are, are lovely and are just, I adore them. But the only Aquarius that I ever dated was my first real boyfriend right before the Scorpio. He was, I don't need to speak on this for very long. If you go back and watch my worst boyfriends ever or nightmare boyfriend stories or something, I think it was worst boyfriends ever. I spilled the tea on this guy. I really spilled the tea. And um, he was very unstable, very manipulative. Uh, I would describe him as the only evil person I ever dated. Um, I just get the chills thinking that I like allowed myself to be spoken to in the way that he spoke to me. I don't think it has anything to do with an Aquarius, being an Aquarius, really. So I don't need to get into it. But um, my only experience dating an Aquarius was certainly not positive. <sighs> That's all I'm going to say. You guys can watch my old videos. I do have other Aquarians in my life that I love, though. Um, my brother's an Aquarius, and he's absolutely fantastic and he's a great guy and he's not evil at all so it just depends on who you have the uh the fortune or misfortune to meet and pisces yes i dated a pisces in college he was cool it's just the the one the relationship that i kind of am like okay it was fine at the time i really think we were like we're in love with each other um he was highly sensitive, highly sensitive person, very kind, very um, um, 
he was not very outspoken. He was just a very, very gentle, kind person, very committed to me, very loyal, very fun and honest, and really, really a, an amazingly creative person, like an amazing visual artist and musician. We just, I didn't, we just didn't have chemistry. It, I thought we did because I went to college and then I met him and I was like, ooh, this is a boy who's in my class. And I don't want to discount the relationship because at the time it was like really great um, for like a college relationship. But we just, looking back, we didn't have real chemistry that could last. I think it was like situational chemistry. I don't think it was actually like the fibers of our being are meant to be together and we can feel it and it's explosive. But yeah, it was a lovely relationship. Uh, we just aren't, we weren't meant to be together long term. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this was kind of random and very chatty and very long, but I know you guys like when I spill the tea and when I let you into my life. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time. Mwah! Bye guys.